Okay. So we're going to start. Are we all ready? Yes. There's a quorum of three of us tonight. I think Spoon is in Ohio. Maybe. He's somewhere. out in the Midwest somewhere. I believe it's Ohio. And Smoky Mountains in Ohio. Robin couldn't be here tonight. So we'll start by recognition of groups and individuals. We have someone here visiting. And we have one. Um, good evening. My name is Rich Holshue. I am a Brattleboro resident. I am the fellow that brought the Indigenous Peoples Day resolution to the town um, over the course of last winter and spring, and it was adopted in April. And I'm here to uh, bounce a similar idea off of you folks because it occurs to me that the school calendar has not changed officially. That's why I'm here tonight. Okay. So do we have, what do we have on our calendar that's not official? Probably St. Columbus Day. day. Mm. Yes, this is uh, in place of Columbus Day. Yeah. It doesn't really say it in the calendar, it just is... It's a day off. It's just a, it's a day an unidentified day, um, off, day off, I believe. Off. Right. Yes. I have copies of the town resolution here, and I have copies of a proposed resolution for the town school board, which basically substitutes the appropriate words. I can pass these around. Is if you're okay interested. with the board to do this now? Yeah. Yes. So just so we've never called it Columbus Day. Yeah, I don't... It's the, as a school system. We're not accusing No, no, I'm just, I, I know, I know, we're just saying for, for clarity's sake, just for the board's purposes, because we, from, from um, only until recent years, do we have that day off, in fact. Yeah. That right. day was not a day off. And um, when it went to a day off, it, was, it, it wasn't called anything. It was, it was just a day off. But it, officially, it wasn't labeled on our school calendar as Columbus Day. Um, That's what I thought, it was just, that day was off. Well, it was off, and it was because Columbus Day and working parents, but we didn't honor it in that way. And there were different conversations about leaf foliage day off and so forth, but we never referred to it as Columbus Day. So what does it say on our calendars now? It doesn't, it doesn't uh, say anything. It just, it just says no school. Right. No school. It's a no yeah. school day. So it doesn't say anything. Well, actually... This one, um, the 2017-18, nope, that's, excuse me, I'm sorry, different calendar. That's what I remember. It came up on my Google Doc. Mm -hmm. this, this is most good. Okay, so we can read this, I guess, if you want to talk about it. I don't, I'm just not sure where we would start to refer to it as anything different if we don't really refer to it now. but. I just so, think any time it came up, um, this would this would be the response, even if we can't think of a particular uh, circumstance now. But I think it's well, as with a lot of a lot of things like this, it's it's symbolic as well. It's sort of uh, rec recognizing um, the tr the true history of the area and uh, recognizing. It. I mean, I have no, I do not have any issues if we wanted to, I mean, are we, are we looking to name it specifically, you know, on the calendar, that's my on the calendar, too. or? Since we don't name it anything now, so I'm we not would, sure if we your resolution. Be yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think the resolution then, is saying that we would be naming it. Yeah. Something. Yeah. yeah. I have no problem with that. Yeah. What? Well, on our calendar right now, I believe the only day we name is actually uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, I believe. That is true. We have uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day named, Memorial Day named. Labor Day. Um, well, I mean for our Yeah. Yeah. Those are the. And Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving recess. Yeah. yeah. Holiday recess, winter break. Well, it's December recess, spring break, mm -hmm. yeah. and yes. winter recess mm -hmm. and spring right. recess. Okay, so if I could make a statement, yes. Yeah. Um, just, just very simply, um, this is mostly you know, dotting the i's and crossing the t's and following through and realizing that it was done on a town level, not on a school level. How you choose to address this is up to you. Um, I just didn't want to leave it untouched. 
unacknowledged. So David, maybe you want to read the sure. resolution. Well, this is the resolution that you guys did. So maybe if you make it in the form of a motion, would that work? Can you read the resolution in the form of a motion? Um, I I think I'll, I, would, I would move the last part of it. Okay. I'll, I'll read the whole thing first. There we go. Resolution for Indigenous Peoples Day, presented to the Brattleboro Town School Board, September 20th, 2017. Whereas, at the Town of Brattleboro 2017 Annual Representative Town Meeting, the town unanimously approved a petitioned article to advise the Select Board to proclaim the second Monday in October as Indigenous Peoples Day instead of Columbus Day, and the Town of Brattleboro Select Board has heeded and said advice by adopting a resolution to that effect on April 18th, 2017, and whereas the Brattleboro Town School Board likewise desires to recognize the indigenous peoples of Montastaga and Sokwakik, the immediate area now known as Brattleboro, Vermont, dwelling here prior to and during the colonization begun by Christopher Columbus in the Western Hemisphere, and whereas there is ample local evidence, including petroglyphs at the West River, demonstrating this area has been inhabited for millennia, long before Europeans began to settle along the Connecticut River and its tributaries, notably at Fort Dummer in Brattleboro in 1724, and whereas the town of Brattleboro recognizes that this area comprises, in part, the homelands of indigenous peoples, including the Abenaki, their allies and ancestors, and whereas Indigenous Peoples Day will provide an opportunity for our community to recognize and celebrate the indigenous peoples of our region in concert with similar celebrations elsewhere, and whereas the Brattleboro Town School Board encourages our public schools, associated educational institutions, businesses, and other institutions to recognize and celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day, I move the Brattleboro Town School Board hereby resolves and proclaims that the second Monday in October of each year shall be Indigenous Peoples Day in the public schools of Brattleboro. Second. And the only discussion I have is that we can only move that it's the public elementary schools. So if we put in one word there. Public elementary schools. Elementary and pre-K, I guess. So I did just look at the high school website and it just says day off. Not for any specific reason. But we can't do anything. No, I know, but. You have to go to the high school. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, um, you might want to add that it's so noted in the school calendar because that's really the only official mm -hmm. place. And and, mm -hmm. and note and, and included in the, in the school calendar. The annual school calendar that is noted this. So include the designation in the school calendar, the annual school calendar. Um, now does. Just a quick question because I know the SU makes those little, little cards. Those are right, set for right. the entire SU, though. So I don't know if we can that's impact true. those because this is just for Brattleboro. Well, at our October 4th meeting, we can act that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make a note of that. Yep. So any so further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So we'll thank you, Rich, and then I'll send it. We're going to send it to the Supervisory Union Board, which next meets on October 4th. Um, if you would be so kind as to prepare something that says at the bottom, well, I guess maybe it's easy enough. Somebody else can just write out, Kim, when you go, shall be that the Wyndham Southeast Supervisory Union cross out the Iowa Town School Board. If you sent me this file, I could send it to Kim. Sure. Change the yeah, I'll send it to you in a PDF and as a Word document. And then it would go, if it went to the Supervisor Union Board, it would spill back down. You wouldn't have to put a dumber set of Putnam and Gilbert mm -hmm. and all of it. In I appreciate that. That would be yeah. good. <laughs> Save a well, lot of trips. <laughs> and we will be uh, bringing this up in the legislature again this year. Although Guilford and Putney and all of them haven't actually had that discussion, right? It's only Brown so. We'll see what they said. The supervisor, Marlboro, as a town. Right. So that's the only. But they're not officially in the supervisory. Right. They're just sent to. So it'll be an interesting discussion. Thank you. Jeff. With the supervisory. Okay. Um, David, I will forward those documents to you. Great. Thank you. Okay.
Thank so you you're very much. welcome to stay on as you wish, but we always try to put people up at the top. So <laughs> I, I appreciate that as well. I have to go home and cook dinner. <laughs> All right. Me too. Next thing Only on three there. blocks away. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing on the agenda would go to the approval of the minutes, the warrants. Okay. Rich, just for the record, you just need to spell your name for us. Your last name. Um, last name is spelled H O L S C H U H. Thank you. Whole shoot. That's not how the knocking. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a motion on the? I move. We the, uh, one, one change, approve the. Approve the minutes and the agenda, and and any warrants. Do we have yeah, warrants? No warrants. So no warrants. No warrants. So no warrants. Yeah. Motion is only for the agenda and the minutes. And no, just just second. One. Just second first. Second. Okay. <laughs> now we can discuss. <laughs> Yeah, I just have one change under um, unfinished business, the Act 46. It talked about the alter we talked about the alternative subcommittee, and the meeting is scheduled for uh, September 21st, and the limited seat is September 14th. I just wanted to correct that. Okay. But I think that was changed afterwards probably when was. we talked about yeah, it. it at the, when we talked yeah. about it at the meeting, that's when it was. So let's not change the minutes. Because that was changed, not, that was not changed when we had our meeting. That's the date. It was changed yeah. in emails afterwards. Or changed so the question email. is, do we want the minutes to go out with inaccurate information? Well, they've already been posted. Because they have to be posted for five days afterwards. So yeah. they've already been posted that way the whole time. So I would say we leave it and then make note in that the meeting, it's on the agenda to talk about it, right? It's, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. so it's at that point you, could, not, you yeah. could make a point. Yeah. Make yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So, all in favor yeah. of that motion? Aye. Aye. Dave? Are you Aye. <laughs> okay. Moving on. That brings us to finances. Why is that on here right now? Just to note that we had the I wonder if that should have been warrants or not. <coughs> or that we had it, everybody had it emailed from Frank, so we all have the report as to where we are at the moment, and then we're to be reading that. Mm -hmm and sending any questions directly to Frank so he can come prepared to answer our questions. I don't think you need to copy me on the questions. I think maybe you should. We, I guess you can copy. Anybody has any questions, copy the whole board, but there'd be no discussion. It's just to let us all know yep. that that would be a question that's coming up. All right. And now we go on to committee reports. I guess we're doing them ahead of administrative reports, huh? Isn't that normally the other way around? It wasn't last time. All right. Policy Council, have you met? We're meeting next week. Energy okay. Committee, no, right? Mm -hmm. no. Act 46 and then the Alternative Governance Subcommittee. So Act 46 in general comes up under unfinished business, so let's kind of just leave that for the report from that. But then the Alternative Governance Subcommittee, so the date changed on the meeting to? To tomorrow, tomorrow, night. Night. tomorrow night. At Green Street at 6. 6, Great. yes. And I know that Vernon will have some representatives there. I believe somebody from Putney, but Putney did not vote to do an alternative governance committee. Um, so they are not having Official. officially anybody there. And Guilford voted not to do an alternative. Anybody. Yes. So don't know if anybody from Guilford will be there or not. So at the moment it looks like it's basically Demerston and Brattleboro? And Vernon. And Vernon. Yes. Is there anybody else, Dave, that you know of? Like Marlboro, uh, anybody no, coming in? No, a board member from Putney is coming, but they, yes. didn't, they didn't vote on it. And there is board. a moderator that will be running the meeting. A facilitator. A facilitator. Moderator. And what's so. the main agenda item? I've seen it, but I forgot. It is to go over what what all of the districts would like for an outcome of a of a merger, what they're looking, what their wants are, uh, and I can pull up the, that's, yeah, the agenda. I, I just it just came today and I didn't look at it, but that's basically to talk about what different towns to talk about what they want for their schools and then see what uh, what's possible under the alternative governance structure. And so, what does Brattleboro yeah. want? What are you guys going to represent? That we, Brattleboro does not lose any programming that we currently have, that we, we merge, that we maintain. Mm -hmm. 
status quo yeah. of what we need, what we want. And that we find uh, a contractual structure up to um, if school, if the school is struggling, that we put together some sort of a, a combined structure that um, develops an improvement plan and provides the resources the school needs to improve and a timeline um, to make sure that it happens. So that the concept of we're all we're responsible for all the kids is is there. Right. And so what would be different than what's already happening as individual boards? Under a merge system, what, when we say that? Well, it's, it wouldn't be a merge system. It would be a supervisor union with member districts. And the districts... Like we are now. Yeah. And well, this is the, if, if other towns want to pursue it, then we'd have to get some legal advice on how to do it. But schools obviously can, can uh, sign contracts and we would agree to a, con a contract that uh, said that we would share the costs of, of uh, necessary programs in other schools than ours um, if the... Board, if the the group agreed that that was the case. So there'd probably be some sort of structure, but none of that, we don't know any of that. We need to find out what people want first and then, and then see what we can do about it, how we can do it. So I'm, just, I'm trying to understand what you said. So you would, you're thinking that Brattleboro would want to help other communities? I think that we said that clearly that we That do. need that. Yeah. But, we, but your idea is that we would not be part of their structure. Correct. It would be a contractual agreement to provide support. They, they, the, the towns would all So we're just financially work. helping another district? Well, no, we would help develop the, the improvement plan and uh, in making the improve, making necessary changes to, to be able to provide for the kids would be the requirement. Doesn't that happen now? So would, no. Would that be for no. schools that were in our Schools that joined the alternative governance structure that came under the, in the with one a supervisory union with member districts, which is pretty much what we have now, right. except we would have contracts for those the kind of things that we would right. need. So, so wouldn't that be the superintendent's job? Well, no, because superintendent can't move funds. It would be the superintendent's job, or maybe the curriculum coordinator's job, to oversee or develop a, the improvement plan. But it would be the governance. Uh, bodies to decision whether to, to support it or not. Well, there's an improvement plan um, mandated through the state that comes out of the ed quality standards. Um, and we do, I forget the name of the new one we're doing now, but there's there's an annual plan. Continuous improvement plan. Continuous improvement plan, continuous yeah. improvement yeah. plan that's, that's a requirement by law, because the ed quality, the EQS, so is in essence for us, it's law. Um, so it would just be very of redundant redundancy. You know what I mean? Well, it, yeah, except that the the improvement plans, if it's if it's school, I think of like, if I can think of an example, um, if a school was having to or was um, having to cut programs, and. Um, well, I can't think of an example that's, that's good, but basic, one of the reasons that um, Act 46 got traction is a lot of schools were struggling and not making the necessary changes to get past where they were. They weren't willing to change or adapt. So the state over and over and over felt, felt like they had to do something about it because the state has to pay when they don't make those changes. So this would be a, a similar process where if the towns, if the towns wanted to keep their schools and wanted support so that they could keep the schools open, they would have to commit to changes. But I'm making this up here as I go along. This is for that organization or that group to determine how do we want to solve that problem. But we can contractually agree to work together to make sure that, that, that all the kids, all the schools are getting open and to, to share support of it. And that would be not in the, well, it could be in the supervisory structure, but it would be a, a contract between the boards. So I guess I'm trying to understand, because it, it's been like two year long or more process for the other Act 46 study committee. I'm trying to understand what this group is wanting to hear, that you know, what Brattleboro wants that we didn't already talk about, and yeah. the other of what Brattleboro wants. And, and for that process, you know, to hear what Brattleboro wants or Dummerston wants or whatever, we had 
specific school board members coming from each of the groups and talking and talking through and looking at it and studying what we already had and what we didn't have and, and looking at all of that. So I'm a little concerned as to who's going to speak up for Brattleboro as to what we want. When, how do we know what we all want? I mean, we brought it back to the full board and talked about it and listened to administrators' opinions and such each time and had town meeting reps give input and all of that before we stated what Brattleboro wanted. It wasn't just off the top of our heads. It, it was a fairly intense process. So mm -hmm. we're concerned as to how we decide what Brattleboro wants. Well, I think we'll have, we can, when we report back from tomorrow's meeting, we can get a much better sense of that than before the meeting. So and I can. You're not presenting tomorrow what Brattleboro wants. You're just. I'll say some things that I think. I'm sure Kim will as well, and we'll probably like some of the things that the other other towns say. But I can't say. You know, I don't know what it's going to be, or what those things will be. But obviously, we would come back and say. I mean, we couldn't do anything about the, the entire board's consent, but we could certainly start the process of talking. Okay. Just come back and tell us. Yeah. And we'll see what it is. I'm still confused as to exactly what that one does. So. All right, the Finance Committee report. Uh, we have not met. We meet next or um, uh, October 4th. Oh, Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday. two Wednesdays. So we have not had a meeting. Okay. And nothing more on Executive Committee because they have a meeting. Correct. Diversity is. Robin? Yeah, they met, Robin? but I'm not sure what they... Uh, uh, yeah, I was there, so I can report real quick. Real quick. Uh, we had our meeting last Wednesday, September 13th. Um, on our agenda, we discussed uh, Vermont Visions Conference, uh, which normally is in the upper part of the state. I don't know a whole lot about it, but um, there is a website if you look up vermontvision.org. Um, and it's going to be at the Putney School November 2nd and 3rd, so uh, Lyle and uh, Michaela Sims are looking to, they attended last year apparently, so they're looking to um, pull together a, um, a group of employees uh, to participate since it's right in our backyard. Um, we talked a little bit about the diversity equity celebration uh, location and that's coming, that's in May. Um, kind of going back to <clears throat> the idea of being able to, you know, go to the town and um, have a larger celebration so that they could kind of close the street, have a block party like they did um, at the beginning. Um, seems to, they, they would like to see it become more of a community-wide event again. Um, so there's some, some discussion around that. And then we really spent most of the last hour looking at the, at the current action plan, um, highlighted some different um, things that are in the action plan around the anti-bias um, and diversity, equity, educational component that's that's in there that each school is going to do. Lyle talked about how we're doing that at the SU um, admin level, doing a lot of um, work. In fact, j even just this last meeting that we had last Friday at our admin, we all read an article. Um, mm -hmm. um, uh, what, what white what children need to know yeah. about race. Yeah. And so, so those conversations that we're having at admin, our, our admin meetings, would hopefully then um, trickle down and expectation is that then we would share those um, and have a similar type of conversations <coughs> with our faculty. So some of the things, I'm just looking at the minutes here, so some of the things that they put that they want to work on are teacher training, building teacher confidence and talking about diversity and equity. Um, send out blurbs and newsletters from the equity committee um, to our various school news newsletters so that the families and parents would know that this equity committee actually exists and what kind of the work that they're doing. Uh, and then again, thinking about uh, what two events to bring um, schools together. Okay. Sure, do you know if the action, the committee action plan is available on the website? I believe so. Um, I have to, um, action plan? The, some of the diversity equity committee, yeah. an action plan. 
Thanks, Kim. You're welcome. So we're going on into administrative reports, and Jerry, you might as well keep going. How's that? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so the first thing that I'll mention is that uh, we have a trailer out back here that is full of bikes. Um, it's the Coles, sponsored by Coles and Fletcher Allen. It's a bike smart trailer that has, I don't even know, like 40 some odd bikes. We have it here for the whole week. There's a curriculum uh, that the kids are doing with PE uh, with uh, Kim Lane about first just helmet safety and bike safety and um, learning how to ride. So yesterday all of the PE classes were in the back here kind of riding for the first time and some of them were like, the kids just excited, you know, even just to have them, even though um, some of the bigger kids I thought, well, I hope that they're going to be into it, but you know, they they were. Uh, a couple teachers now had, because we don't have PE today, so I had a couple teachers that took a class of 18, so we pulled the bikes out, and they, went, they did some more practice out here, and then they went around the block a little bit, and it's just great, because, you know, you assume, <coughs> You make some assumptions that aren't correct about who can ride and who can't ride and based on their age and stuff. And um, so the the hairnets are the big um, big highlight <laughs> because of sharing helmets and so uh. they all wear a hairnet. <laughs> so those have been some of our most favorite pictures is that they get to wear these hairnets and they put the helmets on. But uh, funny, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work, but uh, it's um, it's been great to have it to have How it here. Was that? How'd you do? Um, I've just been in the trailer pulling bikes <laughs> off the trailer and putting bikes, bikes back on the trailer. Um, yes, I've been doing the hard labor. So I haven't been on the bike with my hairnet yet. <laughs> but I plan to on Friday. All right, we'll come yeah. down. You have a beautiful yeah. week for it, to have the bikes here. Yes, we do. Gorgeous week. Yeah. Uh, our open house is next Thursday, September, uh, September 28th. We also, that evening, um, I don't know if I mentioned it already about everyone's books. We're doing a collaboration of everyone's books for our book, our book fair this year. Um, Homework Club starts Monday after school. And our tutoring and we have other enrichment activities will be starting the first week of October. And I just put a big plug out um, for Brat Rock. There's a Brat Rock yeah, Festival this for, Saturday. Seven. And we have an Oak Grove band that's performing, and they're first up at 4 o'clock. They've been over here practicing. And I understand that there's Oak Grove alumni that are just in the middle school. That band is also performing, and um, I think there's some other ones yet. So um, I haven't been. I know that our PTO is planning on having a food booth down, downtown. Uh, I guess last year it drew like about 400 people. So um, if you have a chance to get downtown, Starts at four o'clock Saturday. Were those the boys that were in the music room as we walked in? Most likely, they were excellent. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that in the River, yeah. Gar River, River Garden? Or where is it? No, I think it's in a uh, parking lot. I think it's in the Harmony parking lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The newly the paved Harmony parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> New and yeah. improved. Yeah. Yeah. The um, Root Social Justice Center is having a birthday party that starts at three with a parade that's going to coming downtown so it's going to be a pretty celebratory time to be yeah. in, the, in the downtown and it is homecoming weekend for the yes. next <laughs> yeah oh wow okay. yes. really yes busy mark okay i um, just want to point out some things upcoming for us um, on september 26th we have the opportunity to send uh, quite a large team to um, a training up in white river junction around trauma sensitive schools um, trading is being run by a woman by the name of Joelle Van Lent, who's a psychologist. Um, she's terrific. She um, worked with our admin team at our leadership retreat a couple of years ago. Um, this past summer, she presented at the VPA. Uh, she's very knowledgeable. Um, we spent about three hours with her a couple of weeks ago with a small leadership team from Green Street. Um, just to give her a sense of the things that we're working on and working towards and she's gonna um, help de help design the workshop around our needs as well as a couple of other schools as well um, so we'll be sending 14 staff members to that and what I'm excited about is um, 
uh, her vision for the work is about building resiliency. It's not about identifying trauma and um, you know the effects of trauma, but it's not only doing that, but more importantly, building resiliency in kids and in families. Because um, the reality is everybody has experienced some sort of trauma. Um, so I think that's an exciting opportunity. Uh, we'll be going on the 26th, which is next Tuesday, and then the following Tuesday, October 2nd, I believe. Um, so we'll be spending two full days with her. And it's a train the trainer um, workshop. So the team that we send up to White River to work with Joelle um, will then have to design um, a program that we bring back to the greater um, school. So I think it'll be some exciting work. Uh, ahead, ahead for us this year. Um, next week, we will also have our open house on Wednesday evening, the 27th. Um, our open house will be from 5.30 to 6.15, which is an open house. Parents to come in, visit the classrooms, specials classrooms. Um, teachers will have um, rolling presentations um, going on in the, in the rooms. And then we'll have um, an outdoor barbecue from 6 to 7. Um, so picnic style on the front lawn of the school, and uh, we've been doing we've been putting a ton of work into um, the grounds at Green Street. So I'm excited to show off um, how the school is looking. So about that slide today. What's that? The slide that go in. Uh, that's a future project. Um, we didn't quite get to that this slide. summer with all the work going on at the school. I think it's going to become a luge run in the summer. <laughs> yeah. Um, but speaking of that, we had the um, connection with McDonald's and their grand opening, and they will be presenting a donation to the school. Um, we don't know the amount yet, but on our October 12th, the school sang, and then those funds, whatever they are, are going to be handed over to our student senate, and then the student senate um, will be given the opportunity to um, figure out a way to improve our school um, by identifying a project and seeing it through um, implementation. So maybe the outdoor slide could be tie into that. Um, uh, September 30th, which is next Saturday, will be our PTO tag sale. Um, so that'll be all morning, basically 8 to 12. It's, um, it's a huge event. I mean, we have people nonstop visiting, visiting the grounds. Um, what I learned last year is that people really actually look forward to this tag sale and have been coming back for year after year. So it's becoming a staple um, beginning of the year, end of summer tag sale. So I expect um, that'll be very successful as it has been in the past. And just a, a couple other things. Um, our school focus this year has really been um, continuing some work that we've done it with math last year. So we're um, committed in our schedule to a co-teaching model in math. So K through six this year, every math class is taught by two certified teachers together in a co-teaching model. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, feels like a really fun initiative, um, and we're going to be supporting that throughout the year with um, peer observation and working in and out of each other's classrooms. Um, so that's been the focus of our first couple of staff meetings this year. And then um, final thought is our after school program pamphlets will be going home this week. Um, I'll bring copies of that to the next board meeting. Um, we have a plethora of programs, um, tons of teachers participating. It's uh, really exciting, and, and um, I'm excited about the, the variety of opportunities we're offering our children this year, from fishing to bookmaking to dancing. There's lots of cool stuff. So I'll bring that next meeting. Well, I know a couple of high schoolers that like to do the fishing. Give me some high schoolers that need some community services. Yeah. <laughs> So you should all have received your monthly report today. Yes. We sent, sent electronically. Our enrollment um, is like a revolving door. And that's 
pretty characteristic of the community. So we gain one, lose one, and it's kind of that way with our staffing as well. We did see, and I think Brenda sent to you a, a note along with the monthly report that we did receive our funds to complete the water treatment system in Westminster and the playground here at Bird Street, so that's great. Um, we also received notification, as I was expecting, that our refunding application is due December 1st, so I will be working on that and bringing that forward. We'll be talking about it in Policy Council. I attended a webinar session on Monday that was um, provided by the Office of Head Start to roll out their new monitoring system. In the time that I've been involved in Head Start, I think this is probably the 10th system. But I have to say it's the one that um, seems to make the most sense, at least at the rollout, in that it is um, has really moved away from the, the model where you know, it's kind of the clipboard approach where they come and check and if they don't see it, then we're knocked out of compliance. It's, it's much more organic in that there will be three um, different um, reviews. Right now there are five, so that's great news. And the first one is um, going to be looking at our class scores, which is really about the children's growth and development in the, in the system and it's a research-based assessment tool that we use. So they'll be looking at the, the range of growth. And then um, there are focus areas. So the, the next review will be uh, focusing on our strategic plan and our, you know, our, our systems for monitoring and our systems for measuring our success. And then the last one is really um, looking at, you might remember that we moved to a five-year funding model. And so the last focus review is to look at the past five years to see how well we've done with meeting our goals and being sure that we have systems in place to really regulate and um, make sure we're doing what we say. So at some point, I would like to actually um, do a, a, a little presentation to the board about that because board members and policy council members are very much involved in that process. I expect that we will receive a review sometime this year, and we may actually receive two because um, we've, we've been caught between the review sequencing and they want to catch all the programs up. So I, I very much expect there will be the class review and perhaps um, the first focus area review in the next year. So I really want to um, have you prepared for that. So. We'll figure out a time when I can do a little presentation about that. I uh, participated in the family engagement moving from random acts to comprehensive approaches conference yesterday held uh, by the Center for Health and Learning. And actually, I was invited to be a panelist because the, the focus of the day was really about how to engage parents and how to partner with parents. And so, Julianne was there with me as well at the pan on the panel, and um, I thought that it was um, a, a great conference, and I um, was very excited to be part of that. So we talked a lot about what happens at EES with some of the programming that we provide, as well as sort of the philosophical, fundamental um, basis that we operate from, which is partnering with parents. So. Um, we did have a table at the River Valley Children's Fair this weekend, and that yielded three referrals for our program, so time well spent, and thanks to our staff who did that. And then I think finally I'm going to be testifying next week um, uh, with a, the ACES legislative initiative that's being shepherded by Mike Maricki. This will be test. Uh, There'll be testimonies taken at Winston Prouty, and I'm um, lined up to do that to talk about so ACEs is adverse childhood experiences and its impact on health um, in the in not only in the formative years but in the adult years. And there is a a, a a great lot of effort from the legislators led by Mike to look at this as a a, a need for a population health system that really. Um, promotes resiliency as as the you know sort of as the anecdote to 
um, having adverse childhood experiences and, and really embracing that across the state with health systems and education systems and human services. So I will be giving test testimony to talk about what EES does, particularly in our parent-child center delivery system and, and how we actually do build resilience and work with families to combat some of the, the effects of ACEs. I have two questions. We're a couple weeks in now. How is it going with the preschool? So I'll let Jerry, I defer to Jerry on that one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, we're, uh, every day is better. Um, you know, today was uh, their second week at Law School Sing, and so Andy has, Andy Davis um, has been, because in terms of specials, um, so Andy Davis is one of the music specials, and I didn't realize that he had gone into their classroom last year, uh, or last year, uh, last week to teach them a little song and then at all school sings like they knew exactly what to do with this little song that he did it was really it was um, uh, little Sweet. bunnies and now they were hiding it was really cute um, so uh, yeah we're still waiting on our playground equipment that could be that could be weeks it could be spring before it actually gets in, installed but um, they have uh, little the little bikes and their little you know we all got them all helmets and so they're um, they're figuring it all out you know like what's it like to come into to school what's it like to you know have my my cubby and you know sit in circle and um, and listen and share and everything that's happening is very age appropriate right now um, so staff are tired but this time of year we're all tired. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta get back into shape. What's that? You gotta get back into shape. Yeah, yeah it's a whole, it's a whole different um, uh, tempo, if you will. Has the staff had a chance to talk with people from Botany or Guilford yet about their experiences? Uh, I think there was some of that at in, during our in-service um, in August, and then during our in-service again in November, there will be um, opportunities for that. Guilford's just starting too. So. Yeah, that's yeah. why it might be yeah. a great time to talk. Yeah. 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 So they're setting up some um, some like PLP uh, uh, PLC uh, time, some personal learning communities um, with the pre-K uh, teachers in order to try to do some collaboration. And um, but it's hard when we're in school, you know, because it's hard to find it. The subbing situation because it's it's a pre-K so you fall under a different um, fingerprinting back and background check than you do for school. So uh, the subs that we currently have in the system are for uh, like a, a K-12 clearance, not for a pre-K clearance. So when they're out of the building, it's so we're not really pushing right now um, to have you know teachers out of the building for that. Were you really looking at our in-service time to have them um, do that work? Would you be able to use some of the subs that EES has? I think we, yeah, I think okay. there are a few, but then again, it's mm -hmm. no, there aren't a whole, there aren't a lot. Right? No, I know so, they're not, but yeah. So some of the subs that um, we know are willing to, that we feel would be great in that position, are willing to go through the whole background check and fingerprinting, uh, even though they have to do it again. And under a different umbrella. Yeah. And so I would just add that I'm really impressed with the level of collaboration, especially with some of these preliminary challenges that we've been experiencing, that the, the, the team from EES and the team from here have really pulled together and rallied, and they're sharing resources and, and you know, knowledge and expertise. And um, it feels really good. So my second question for you is always about vacancies and turnovers. And that's, I look at this report every time and hope to see something different, but mm -hmm. I don't know. There's hired year to date, we're at 17. Left year to date is 14. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Are we hiring the same ones that are leaving? No. Okay. That's no, it's a revolving good. door. So, well, you said that for kids, but you're meaning it for everybody. Mm -hmm. right. For staff, too. Um, you know, um, 
I was just dealing with a resignation before I got here. Um, this is hard work. And I, I, you know, we sometimes staff just burn out and it's time for them to move on. And other times, you know, whatever the situation may be, um, they leave. And, and we are, you know, our pay is not, is not um, as high. We've talked about this before. And um, we are a training ground also. We have a very generous training budget here. We're, we're giving our teachers free college courses right now. And we have been for a number of years. And they often will, you know, reach a certain level and then move, move on. And um, it takes a lot of energy to work with really young children. People get tired. So it's all that, but again, it's not just an issue in Brattleboro. It's a national epidemic. It's a real problem. I wasn't thinking so much about the, um, the turnover. It's just the ease of the, of the stress in terms of asking a question about being with the other the teachers from the other programs. Cause mm -hmm. the, um, I mean, having peers to talk about it, and, um, mm -hmm. and opportunities for that and relationships with us. It's, it's, I'm just wondering about instead of coming to a regular faculty meeting, if maybe the, the three of them could, um, or actually it's six, cause there are at least two in each room, right? Mm -hmm. Could go to the Guilford Deli and have coffee and, and just kind of talk about what's going on. You know, just find other ways to, to get them together. The um, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm sure maybe not right now, but at some point, what goes on in pre-K is going to be related to what happens in kindergarten and first and second grades. Not to the point of we're using the same math program or you know or anything like that. But um, it seems like the pre-K is very different from the rest of the things that go on in the building. It is, and so those conversations I would add should include people from the field of early childhood. This is two different worlds. Yeah. So, you know, facilitating, finding a way to facilitate that. I mean, we have the in-service structure that's in place, but that's no number of, you know, I'd hate, hate to have somebody burn out in the very beginning, but also hate to miss an opportunity to, to learn something from mm -hmm. somebody that's having the same, similar experiences and creating solutions as well. So I just want to encourage that they would be just open the doors to whatever you want to be able to pull off. Yeah, I, I'll just, you know, echo though what Deb said is in terms of, you know, the support that's um, coming from um, EES um, directors and from Triple E and, you know, there's, there's lots of people that are, are working together um, to come in to, you know, to try to help with classroom, anywhere from things like classroom setup to looking at curriculum to, um, behavior coaching, um, all those things are happening right now. And I'm sure that there's, um, you know, they all, the preschool teachers in the school district all know each other, and I'm sure that there's some back and forth things that are that are happening. Uh, and with Putney and Gilford as well, yes. That's what I, yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. Andy? Um, well, our open house uh, is the 28th as well. Um, we moved that from the 21st to the 28th, and it's um, five to six is our barbecue. Though, thinking maybe it makes more sense to do that afterwards, uh, after after the open house portion, uh, like Green Street does it. But we start with with the barbecue out front from five to six. This year, um, we are featuring, uh, as usual, hot dogs and hamburgers, but we will. Also, there'll be a meat undecided yet whether it's going to be pork or chicken. That will be um, a Brazilian barbecue. Mm -hmm. How come? I was just going to say I'm going to Green Street. Hot dog. Well, they're Wednesday night. You could do both. You could take your wife and say um, take oh, a Oak Grove is Thursday. Oak Grove is Thursday. Right? Grove is Thursday right? yeah. What do you have? Um, <laughs> Food at your yeah. <laughs> What's the food at the open house? No, I'm no, we have a big harvest fest in November. Ours is uh, the Thursday before Thanksgiving, so you'll have to come for dinner then. Okay. <laughs> Andy, why Brazilian? <laughs> Brazilian because we have the uh, one of our our interns is Brazilian, and 
um, loves to barbecue, so we're going to put him to work, and he's going to be the head chef that night. Maybe I'll bring my Brazilian exchange student down I mean, to Bring you. your Brazilian, I know you really. Yeah. <laughs> Liarte, our Brazilian intern, would love to, I'm not going to be talk to so someone else from Brazil. What day is this? The it's 28th. 28th. Next Thursday night. Our, our after-school program is beginning um, Monday, um, and our drama club is starting. And we, we start the year traditionally with a, with a production for the second and third graders. Um, and this year's uh, production is titled, ready for this? Miss Twiggle's Tree. Uh, Miss Twiggly's Tree. Miss Twiggly's Tree. And it's, um, it's a play about tolerating differences. So it's very timely and uh, exciting. We have, um, I believe, 20 students uh, have come forward to sign up for that. Uh, we are, actually we have, <laughs> the, the cap was, I think, 16 and uh, we have 20, so we'll go with 20 and find parts for all 20 students. Um, as Deb had mentioned, the Vermont Legislature's meeting is actually the 29th. Um, at um, Winston Priority, and I think all three of the principal, all three of us are going yes. to that meeting with, I think, counselors as well, yes, um, to talk about uh, the crisis, the children in crisis, um, which is now, I think, an epidemic in our community. Um, um, and I'm sure in the surrounding communities. But, um, so we're looking forward to testi giving testimony at that uh, meeting. It's the 29th? 29th. Um, that Mr. Prouty, I give you the exact time, is um, uh, 10 a.m. folks. And October 14th uh, is our playground, our all-natural playground build day. Um, we're lining up parents to come on that, that's a Saturday, to come and help us continue this multi-year project. Um, we have some things that will be assembling on that day, and I'm looking forward to that. Did you find boulders? Well, we have, uh, we have several. Big announcement last year, we, last we, we, just, we don't have any way to get boulders uh, at the present time, so we've located additional boulders, just don't have a way to to get them there. Um, to get you a bigger tractor. <laughs> That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. The problem is getting them there. And we have people who generously donate them, or they they can't get them there for us. Can yeah. so my boulder? Come get it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Free boulders, come get it. Um, so you need a lot of apparatus. Not only do you need a flatbed to transport it, you need a big yellow shovel dozer or something to pick it up on both ends. So, um, or a crane if it's big enough. Yeah, so, um, so we're, we're working on that. But we have enough <coughs> boulders right now to, uh, they're in place for our mud kitchen. And um, and then we have enough boulders in place where we will be assembling large logs. I think the longest is 22 feet. Um, and there'll be balance beams and uh, so things like that that kids can walk on or shimmy up. Um, and those trees have all been cut from our property to be cleared the spot. So we're repurposing, I guess you could say, those trees. So it sounds like you're good with boulders, so we don't have to put out a plea for anyone to help. Well, well, we'll, we'll, we'll take, need we'll take boulders if boulder movers. delivered. Yeah. We need yeah. boulder movers. Yes. That's boulder what we need. Movers. <laughs> They're more problematic than I than I thought. Yes, <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> you can't pull them up. Put them in your pocket. Yeah, pick up for the pick up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that brings us around to you. Do they and do you have anything that you wanted to do for an update from Central Office? I don't think so. Nothing specific. So unfinished business takes us to Act 46. <coughs> right now, I haven't heard anything. I have. Okay. I because I was texting away. Amy about soccer, and she 
Well, she know. very happily informed me. Um, so the, um, she said that the SBE was very complimentary, especially regarding our leadership, leadership councils in Article 15, Yay. and it was unanimously approved. <coughs> the article been unanimously out. Yes, yeah, she did not say that. But, but, but had yeah, they had to be released out before we were. So today was yes. the, up at the state level for everybody. Yeah. Thank you for so it was, uh, Vernon had to be approved for their vote in the Act 49 action, so that Vernon is now officially released from the supervisor union. However, Vernon's wording on their <coughs> vote that they did said that they would be released at such time that made sense, something like that, so that it, with a maximum time frame of July 1st, 2019. And it was all based on a merge. Um, yes. So they're merge officially merge. allowed to leave, but they aren't leaving until such time that the rest of the supervisor union goes into another form. So that was approved, and then what you're saying is the other was approved, our which is our agreement. article. Today. So that would mean Act 46. Um, the study committee is the now. The study committee is now on to do discussions and explanations to prepare for a vote, and the vote, we wanted it to be a vote with the normal elections. So that's in November. And then also the, um, or. yes, to those should be at um, town clerks if you Already, should yeah. choose to run for the Unified board. Yes. And the thing that's strange about that is that the law requires you to elect a board at the same time as you discuss or you vote yes or no whether you're going to merge. So right now people are out getting petitions for a board that doesn't for sure <coughs> exist, but that's the only way to do it. And, it, and so Brattleboro has, what was it? It end? has two or three. It had, well, there are four. Oh no, we went up to Yes, there are four Brattleboro only positions and then there are two at large positions that anybody from any of the towns may run for. So it's kind of for the camera more than for all of you because I don't know if administrators are suddenly dying to go out and be on a unified board or two, but it's um it's it, it, no, it, no, no, if you <laughs> were on to run for Brattleboro's town or Brattleboro's representation on the unified board you would be getting Brattleboro only signatures. Mm -hmm. If you were running for the at-large positions, you can get <coughs> signatures from anybody in the entire supervisory union, although I don't know about Any that. registered vote. Any registered right. vote. I don't know if you yes. can get, I actually don't know whether you could go get um, signatures from Vernon right now or not because they wouldn't be in, so I think not. I think it'd be anybody else. Probably, would be. Be yes. Yes. Probably not. Rely on that. But there are Sorry. plenty of events this Saturday where you can go one-stop shopping to get signatures if you yeah. need them. <laughs> How many signatures are? Oh, I forgot. It's it was percentage larger of the population. The, it was larger too for the at-large mm -hmm. than it was. There's more signatures required. But anyway, the town clerk's office has both of them. If anyone is wanting to do that. And one thing too, the town school board will be still in effect until July 1st of 2019. Even so if that. Even if there. there, even if there is a merger, a, yes. A transition. So, so I don't you know. You're still in, stuck with us, no matter what. For yeah, but in March <laughs> there must be somebody that's out. I uh, I have to go back up for re-election okay. for another year. <laughs> if, if I chose choose to do that. And the study committee is officially still around until this it's done. I guess. But I don't. Do we have another time we're meeting? Yeah, just the next meeting is when we do the presentation. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have on Act 46. Anybody else? Proposed local board policy, which we tabled. Are we still tabling it? The enrollment of children and teachers of teachers and staff? Do you know anything on that, Julia? I don't, so I think we're still tabling it. Let's see. We table it. Yeah. All right. Remains tabled. <coughs> uh, new business. I have a note. Um, I write to you, this is from Barb Nowakowski. I write to you on behalf of Ruth Barton, BUHS District Number 6 Board Clerk, as a notification that is August, as of August 21st, 2017, Lori Cartwright resigned as the Brattleboro representative on the BUHS District Number 6 Board of Directors. The BUHS District 
Board number six has advertised and has a candidate interested. And so the person who is interested to fill is Katie Everest. And the recommendation from the BUHS board is that Katie would be a, do a great job. Um, she, I, when I first saw this, I thought, but she's not from here, because I knew her on the Dummerston board, where she served for five years and one year as chair. But she's recently moved to Brattleboro, so she is able to serve for us on the Brattleboro. So we would need a motion to actually, I guess the motion would be to assign her, appoint her to the BUHS board. And what would we uh, appoint Kay Evers to the BUHS number six board? Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 And so that position remains until the election. So but March, she's, right? yes, she's filling the seat through 2018, for 2018. All right. The goal around creating a more diverse <coughs> workforce, and we had some discussion about that since not everyone could be here, and our meeting is actually falling on <coughs> a holiday for some folks, so we wanted to make sure we do that discussion a little bit later. Um, wanted to talk to the board if you felt like October 18th worked for that, since October 4th is going to be a shortened, it's only one hour meeting because the supervisory union meeting is right after that. And David, you will probably have to run that meeting because there is, I have finance committee at the same time. For October 8th. Act October 4th. October 4th. That's the other question for me. Jill is out of town. October 4th. I see. There's yes. no Jill <laughs> the and there's no the Kim. Chair or the, the clerk? clerk? Oh. There's no Jill and there's no Kim on October 4th. Are you for sure able to come, Dave, on October I, 4th? Yeah, I pretty much, unless I'm sick, Wednesdays are all saved for uh, so every other Wednesday for this. Robin, I think, said she could, and Spoon. Spoon will be back. He, yeah, for back. sure. He's back. Well, that's I think it. he said Friday. Okay. That's why I thought he was coming almost in time for this one, so that sounds right. Mm -hmm. So if one of them can't make it, then this whole meeting can't happen on October 4th. Or you can have a meeting, but you can't right. really do anything. Mm -hmm. So Though if we needed to, I, I would be in the building. I'm, sh I'm sure everything is meeting at the, in the same place. I don't know. I Where don't are know. You meeting? I don't know. I've not heard that. Heard yet. Because it would Where normally be. Where because I'll be at finance. Oh, so yeah. if we needed to vote on something, oh, I see. if I was in the same building, and also I could this come and vote. Supervisor <laughs> union meeting, Dave, aren't you the alternate if I can't be there? Uh, I thought we were all going to go. Or is that going to no, That's something that's going to be proposed. No, anyway. No, um, I'm just saying that there's three of us that are actually named as voting people to that supervisor union board. No, I don't remember. And I don't. I, I know I'm one of them. Would you? Would you? <coughs> oh sure. There yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah. See, you will not be here. I will ask the question. Would you be the voting? But well, he doesn't <laughs> know if he yeah. already is the voting member, though. Well, That's we'll, no, we'll spoon is somebody. spoon is the other voting member. It's you, sure? myself, and spoon. You sure? Because he's I'm the one. So on too, active, I'm right? pretty sure. No, I'm pretty sure yeah. it's spoon. Okay. Yeah, so Dave, I think we gave it. I'm pretty sure it's spoon. Yeah. If I'm here, I well. So I'm leaving. It's a Wednesday. It's in. It's here at Oak Grove, right? Isn't it in Brattleboro, the SUV in Brattleboro? Because usually if, 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 well, in the past when we've had shortened meetings because the SU meeting, the SU meeting is in the board, in the building of right. the yes. school district having the SU, the shortened meeting. So well, we've, we've also gone, we had one meeting over in you, we went to Dumberston one time. time because of that. I don't and even they were meeting in the building right now. Yeah, but we oh, actually we had our meeting in Dumberston. Oh, okay. So, well, whatever that is. Uh, it would be good to know that, and particularly to know um, the location for the 18th as well, because we're going to add diversity to that, um, which is budget view and universal meals and the presentation around gender affirming communities, and we moved the endowments report to that agenda as well. Well, that's coming up yet, that we would, on the 18th. we need to discuss whether that fits on the 18th. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, we could move that so, again. Okay. okay, so the goal around creating a more diverse workforce we're tabling to October 18th. Yes, can Just you know, Robin is the voting member. It's not. On the SU. Yes. 
Robin is the voting member. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you still need to go then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, so we're, well, so we're leaving it yeah. that October 4th we are going to meet. It'll be Robin, Dave, and Spoon. We don't know where on October or on October 4th. And October 18th. It's well, fine. <coughs> yes, but it needs to be the same place as finance and okay. supervisory unions yeah. meeting, too. So that, that's a yeah, question so from Ohio. Julianne has to figure it out. Yes. And then October 18th is going to be talking about diversity. Yes? Yes. yes. And so Lyle has found us jumping down to E, gender equality training for the board we need to talk about, but she has found us one for the. Oh, the other gender, what was it? Gender equity training. I know, but the, that's the one that she wants to talk about when to schedule and when to do. Well, it's I think she has some for October 18th. I think she right did. Now so it's is that for gender, gender equity? Yes. Yeah. Or, or yeah. equality? It's yeah. on the it's calendar. Gender, okay. Yeah, sort of best practice around. All right. So that's, that's going to happen on the 18th. So we'll do the, and we'll do B on the 18th as well, B and E. Okay. So we're talking about the, the goal of creating a more diverse workforce. That's B. And we'll do, we'll talk about gender equality. We'll do that training as well on the 18th. Okay, we also moved the budget overview, including universal meals to the 18th. On our, on our work plan. So that's D, fiscal year 17 year end review with Frank. And yep. Frank, at the last I talked to Lyle, she wasn't sure if Frank could come on the 18th. And we weren't sure that we wanted to do diversity discussion and the budget. I mean, yeah. Does that make sense, or would you like Frank to come at a different time? Well, we don't. That would it would have to be the fifteenth. Both of those would have to go at least to the fifteenth. Eighteenth. No, I mean November fifteenth because we have another short meeting on November first. Yeah. So, um, and the fifteenth is supposed to be the first the budget session curriculum overview, and. Um, Yeah, the student, we're going to do student academic data performance review on the 4th. So let's ask this video. question. How much time do we think we need with Frank? I mean, if he sent us all the information and we look <coughs> at it, do we want Frank to give us a presentation on it, or do we want to just look at it on our own and ask questions? Well, I think the questions part is fine, but he included universal meals, and that's going to be the conversation, because there is a difference. Of I don't have anything about universal meals in this right now. So No, okay. but it's on the agenda. So I mean, it's on our um, on the plan, and that was intentional. I'm sure I didn't put it there, so I was. No, What is Universal's meal? Well, I don't remember what Universal meal discussion. It's about was. whether um, the SU, how the SU could go about um, having Universal meals in all the districts, and as, as it turns out from further research with the um, the Department of Health, I think it is the um, even as a merge, uh, even if we all merged. We wouldn't have enough. Uh, we wouldn't have universal meals at all. So that needs to be. We wouldn't need universal. <coughs> meals? We wouldn't be able to have universal meals because our poverty, our SNAP receiving, SNAP benefits receiving population would be too low to qualify for universal meals as a supervisory district if we were all merged. That's the, that's the information that I got based on the data that the woman from the health that I sent to you and you sent to Frank. And that's, so I, I, I believe, I didn't that. put the sign here, but I believe that's what that's about. I thought we were talking about the menu at one point, too, is that? That could be, I don't think that's universal meals, but it may be. Okay, so on October 18th, and then there's also this C, Curriculum Implicit Bias. Did you get anything to say on that? I mean, I can talk a little bit about that tonight or I or mean that's something we can move toward sort of. yeah is that different yeah. than it seems like that fits in with diversity, diversity. well yeah it's, yeah it's part and parcel yeah it is yeah mm -hmm. so that would be good. so I'm thinking perhaps we're going to put C on mm -hmm. October 18th as well so if we're <coughs> talking about curriculum implicit bias goals of the goal that we were talking about creating a more diverse workforce and the gender equality training, which Elia thought was going to probably be about 30 to 40 minutes. Do we also want to look at universal meals and the seven, fiscal year seven, um, 
2017 year end review. That would pack October 18th. That would be a long meeting. Yeah. I think we should move the budget over here, but I mean, what it doesn't we, have to What happen. if we made November 1st instead of 5 to 6, 5 to 6 30? It can't. gives because us. The, the well, we can have the Act 46 at start at 6 30, the informational meeting. I thought it was like set in stone with. No. I don't know if it has been. Okay. I mean, but that's. What else has That to would give us an extra half an hour. Yeah, that's up to the state. Yeah. So what else is on there that we want to. Um, it just says for the first, it's a shortened meeting, Act 46. So we can move. So the there's meeting. nothing else on the first? Mm -mm. No. So why don't we do the budget on the first? Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Budget would be. Can I ask a question about the You can ask anything you want. <coughs> we don't know anything out here. <laughs> <laughs> so did I hear the fourth, which is the I'm next board meeting, is mm -hmm. the data review? And that's a shortened meeting, and there's only three board members here? You did. Mm -hmm. I'd kind of like to hear the data review. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But I'm not, I mean, that's, I'm traveling, so it's my yeah. problem. I mean, I'm personally, I'm hoping to, uh, my leadership team is hoping to put together um, just a, a PowerPoint of the evolution of the past three years, which uh, highlights data, but also other factors mm -hmm. at Green Street. And I wouldn't want to do that to just with yeah. just three board members here. I agree. What are the other two of you planning on doing for data review in October? What were you thinking, Jay? I think, well, I, I just felt like, um, I think central office is probably going to do a data presentation. Mm -hmm. I just felt like um, I wanted to highlight, I think we've had tremendous growth at Green Street over the past three years. And um, that reflects in our data, but not totally in our data. So I just wanted the opportunity for our leadership team to kind of present and maybe give the board a greater picture of you know, what you, we've been doing over the past three years. Just a quick clarification. When you, uh, you talk about data, you talk about SPAC scores. Yep. Because I would prefer we didn't spend any time talking about SPAC scores and look at the other things that are going on. But, um, I mean, I just wish that would go away, but it's not going to. What if, what if we decided instead of doing our meeting on October 4th, did it October 11th and October 18th? You're not here on the 11th? You're not back yet? Okay. But I, that's my life. Yeah. <laughs> no. So. I mean, I don't think you can plan around me. But you want to hear the data, though, yeah, too. Yeah, so so. I do, but don't plan around me right now. That's, I'm out for But what if we did the, I mean, we do two late ones, do the 18th and the 25th for our two meetings in the month. That way we're not, we don't have shortened meetings. We have two full meetings. We can, we have a lot of stuff that needs to be talked about. Mm -hmm. um, and... Well, we also need to move the endowments report. I mean, I could, I could. We haven't even talked about that, that yet. That has to come up on other. Mm -hmm. So let's get that out um, for everybody. I forwarded a letter and I didn't print it out. I should read it, actually, to everybody, I guess, so that it's known. I don't, I don't think I forwarded it to the administrators. So if we just finish on the, the go back to the, the data presentation, because I'm mean, like that's up in the year. Yes. Uh, a what it is you're expecting mm -hmm. to be, what it will be. Mm -hmm. So, I, personally, I would like to see us back scores. I don't, why are you thinking, Dave, you don't want well, I'm, I'm sick of the, the um, emphasis that we put on that. I don't because think we I mean, have if, if, we got a present, if we have a presentation about us back scores, I'd like to know how they inform what happens in the buildings. Um, rather than, well, obviously the, the numbers would be valuable too, but I'm just, it's, it's become what we look at and all that we look at when we talk about our schools. And I, it's not a, well, it's not it all doesn't really tell us anything. I mean, for us, yeah. it's all that we look at or all that we have problems the public cares about. Well, I, I feel like we look at the, the Ames web stuff. We've talked about all sorts of different things. We've done ways that, and we've worked really hard to get all that information out. And we've asked, you know, time and again, more information, more ways of looking at it, more. Well, we we more kind of ignored the SBAC because the first year after the kneecaps, we spent a lot of time on kneecaps. But then we said, okay, now it's SBAC the first year, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on that because they're kind of so new that they don't really say much. Last year we gave a cursory glance, we didn't spend much time on it. I feel like three years in, they're going to be a little more valuable. I don't know if you guys want to argue that they're not, but I would, I, I would, I'd like to hear the, I, I would like to hear what the value is. Maybe that could be part of that review as well. I mean, really, what, how do they help you in terms of of improving your schools? 
compared to all the other things that you do. Well, they're, they're, um, it's, it's one measurement. It's not the only measurement. It's one piece. So I guess if you if you believe that um, that stu a student achievement, student learning is measurable, um, and if you believe that that we can influence that, then it's important. If there are people who don't believe student achievement is measurable, um, or that SPEC is the instrument to do that. Um, but if you believe it is, if the student achievement is measurable, we can do things to, and we can do things as in classrooms and as a school to affect that. Then it's relatively important because it's it's a common um, it's a common benchmark. It's a common measuring tool, and. Now, it's not the end all, beat all. It's not the only measurement, but it is one of. But can you? Just, well, I don't know how much time I spent on this because it's you know obvious earlier. But can you look at the students' um, SBAC scores and figure out what you need to do differently with that student request and the way you do with the benchmarking that we uh, that we do now? It's, it's not that. I mean, other people can chime in, but I, it, it, it's not used um, in particular. <coughs> Uh, for a micro view of just looking at individual students, uh, it can be um, for certain things, but but um, we don't, you know, use it um, looking at individual uh, kids per se, but rather than look at looking at um, you know how successful we are in implementing a new math program, for example, um, how um, you know uh, Eureka Math is going and. and look at it in terms of where we're, we need to improve uh, the way we present or we teach it. Um, we can look at it in terms of what um, tier two, what interventions we need so that, so that a significant percentage of our kids um, get extra help so they can also be at the level we think they should be at or be at grade level. So it's used much more in terms of school-wide grade level classroom than individual. So we don't generally sit down and say, okay, we're gonna talk about student X today, let's pull out his X back, the S back scores. Although that could be part of identifying students for special education, that is, that, that could be, that's often a measurement amongst many that's looked at. Does that, that yeah, sense? it's just, it hasn't yeah. been really helpful to look at the difference between populations and being able to see whether we're affecting the growth of of um, students with free and reduced lunch as opposed to the entire population. We, we were looking at that for quite a while. That is, the, mm -hmm. that is the impetus behind No Child Left Behind and behind the ESSA, closing the achievement gap, the significant gap the well, that's why between we, the you know, yeah. disadvantaged and advantaged, economically disadvantaged and economically advantaged students. Um, that's the impetus. And isn't the S back really 51 the only way? 51% of our students in public education in the United States are living in poverty. It's a significant number. It's the first time ever that we've got that high. There are more. The majority of students in public schools are now living in poverty. Um, sort of that comedy for the quote richest nation in the world. But, um, so so that, that's a significant group. Not only in Broadway, but national. It's also the only way we have to measure or to look at ourselves in comparison to other schools or other states, even. Right? Mm -hmm. we can no, those are, yeah. those, that's valuable information to have. The, the, the issue is that what we're looking at is how many kids are at grade level on a given day, of a given month, of a given year. And I don't think that there are two four-year-olds or two four. I mean, it's not the fact that kids are in the fourth grade classroom, and, and that means that there's a grade level that they all can all should be at. I think it's just an absurd idea. But that's what we were, were given in this whole the, the no child left unharmed and everything that's come since then is because they want we want to be able to compare schools and do the demographic data as well. So that's what that's what they came up with. Well, we, we but it's not a real us. it's not a real thing. I mean, grade level is really made up, and one well, of the impacts is that well, we can't have yeah. uh, multi age or multi grade yeah. classrooms. I, I think we I don't, and I mean this in the philosophical. We would we all argue that grade levels are made up. There's a significant 
body of knowledge from educators, science, science engineers, mathematicians that have gone into creating SPAC, and there's a there's a common um, you know the the um, common core was developed based on that, and the SPAC is right now I, I think the best you know the best way to, the best measurement of that. So you have the common core, and this is an attempt to find a way that, that, as well as you can through an exam, through an examination, to measure those standards, which is significant agreement nationally um, among professionals, not just in education, as to what those standards should be um, in each grade level and as kids progress through, you know, th through high school and through graduation. Yep, no, I, I understand that part of it. I just think it's the, the absurd part is that that there's some place that every nine-year-old, that the expectations every nine-year-old would be at on, on that given day, and that you can demonstrate that they're all the, that there's a grade level that every nine-year-old, um, that there's a norm that every nine-year-old should reach. Given the diversity, the differences among kids, and the impact of, of um, you know, the, the SBAC doesn't accommodate for poverty. It does for special needs, but no, not necessarily for the, the cultural. Right. Well, if it accommodates, see, that's the thing. If it accommodates for poverty, then it would, in fact, not support the effort to to uh, erase or eliminate that gap, right? So it's so, and, and that gap again is what started all this to say, okay, we have this significant gap in our in our country uh, between the wealthy and the, the poor, the affluent and the and the, the, the poor. Um, and how that impacts children, and, and we're talking in general terms. In, in right, no, general. That, that is a huge value that came out of that legislation, is that we, we have data that demonstrates that. Yeah, um, so how do you, how do schools make that up? How do you, how do you ch improve anything if you don't measure it? You, know, you can't really, you can't improve anything if you don't measure it, right? I mean, you can't make an bill faster if you don't measure it, you can't make a, car more efficient if you don't measure it. You can't, you know, you can't improve anything without measurement. So it's, it's the best effort to date to measure that so that there's a, there's a way, you know, a relatively scientific way to, to advance that, to target um, those specific uh, standards and figure out ways to, to address those to elevate, to elevate all students closer to those standards. But regardless so, of the whole philosophical discussion? So my, my point was, for Green Street at least, is I want to have an opportunity to present to the board um, just kind of like our three-year story, three-plus year story of um, where we were when I started day one at Green Street, the evolution of our school and where we are right now, and tie data into that. Um, but also just kind of paint a picture for the vast changes that we've made at the school. Um, when I started at Green, the PICUS report was coming out, mm -hmm. highlighting Oak Grove and Academy and all the wonderful work that they've done over the years. Um, I'm really proud of where we are right now as in comparison to where we were day one. And I just want the opportunity to present that. So putting aside the whole one. philosophical yes. question too, we get judged as a school district on how we're doing, and, and those are the numbers that we're judged on. I mean, that's where the federal you No know, Child Left Behind laws said, you know, you have to be in improvement plans, and I, I mean, I, I think we have to look at aspect data. I think, I, I think we have to look at it, too, I, and I'm not, I, and it, I, I'm not um, saying we should ignore it, but, but if you think about the things that we get the most response from when we have the public and the presentations, it's the details rather than um, that there's these standards and it helps, or that this test tells us that you know, we can help, we know that there's this deficit with these lower income people. Our teachers know what those deficits are, if, it, if it's vocabulary or it's a cultural awareness, and they do interventions, they make changes, they make efforts, and we saw what the things that Paul showed us, the, the, the loss over the vacations and all of that stuff, and the really specific work that's being done. Which, is so, which has day-to-day, -day individual, meaningful value to the kids. The public gets that every time we show them that, the people are just they're overwhelmed and so grateful that we shared that information. And I just, I think that we're just, we've been focusing on it, it becomes 
um, a political argument. It becomes a selling point for political perspectives or for, or for um, policies. For people who want something to happen, they pull out these standardized scores and say, well, see, we have you know, these scores show this, therefore we have to make this change. And it's not telling the truth about what's happening. And the thing, the thing that is most troublesome to me is that we see the elementary school scores. And the, I said you saw that the, um, the thing that the digger did last year for last year's scores. And they, uh, they put together a graph. You can go every single school, every county. You can compare it by county, statewide, and a bunch of different, uh, different standards. And you see all the elementary schools in various ways. Sometimes the third grade's not doing so great. But generally, all the elementary schools do a really great job. And then when they take the same test, when they get to seventh and eighth grade, you start to see those numbers really dropping off, the achievement, the achievement numbers. And instead of being some of the best in the county, now we're kind of in the middle. And when you get to the high school, the number by 11th grade, the numbers are way down. And there's got to be something, to me, there's something wrong with the test if that can happen. Because the, the, um, it's not telling us what we need to know. I think there's something wrong with when the kids take the test. Yes, I, I don't think there's something the wrong with the test. I can tell you. This year. Yeah. That's not how the numbers yeah. look this year, actually. This year is better? This year, is, is the band's numbers are above state average, yeah. which I think reflects actually what's been going on. That actually is not about that one seventh grade right. year. That's about what happened K to six. So that's, that's and, and continuing into seventh. So I, that pattern, just if you take a look, it doesn't match that. I didn't take a look at the BOHS data, but I did look at the I think it, it, it elementary might be worthwhile, and this yeah. is actually for the high school board, yeah. to look back yeah. Yeah. through the kneecap things as well and, and see what, what's what's. But there. I also know when my kids come home and they sit there and they say, oh, I took a, we had to take a stupid test today and we didn't, nobody paid attention to it and we just yeah. laughed our way through yeah. it. I mean, it's but not. I filled, in every, B, B, I filled in every B, 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 bubble B, B. or I did everything. Exactly. Yeah. So it is yeah. not taken seriously. By, and it's not one kid that's telling me that, it's a whole bunch of kids sitting around a table telling me that. So I right. think you just have to be careful because um, I think as a board you want to honor their hard work that teachers are doing in classrooms, that the people are doing at Green Street. You really want to honor that work um, because it is a valuable tool that helps us measure growth of, of, of schools or of classrooms or grades. And, um, I think when you, when people are working together, as they are, you know, at Green Street, and and they're, you know, they're working hard together to accomplish something. They believe in what they're doing. It's really important for them to have an opportunity to present it publicly, and and get that recognition, you know, from the board. And because um, uh, I think they, they or are our teachers in our schools, we 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 take that data again. Uh, it's only one piece, but we we think it's fairly significant. So, you know, I think to honor that work, um, it would be important for the board to. So, really, yeah, I just agree completely. Yeah. Right. yeah, I would just say too, you know, as a, someone who taught English language arts in middle school, which is a big area of the test. I mean, I would echo that kind of wearing both my curriculum coordinator hat and my teaching hat from last year. It's not that you're, you know, that that test is the most important thing and that you're teaching to the test, but you're working hard and you're, you see kids coming in and you see, hey, here's where we want this student to get. You're like kind of really working to see that improvement. And just today I texted, you know, my English teacher pair who I used to work with last year to say, look at great job, you know, high five, you know, because it, it was just taking a look at the scores from our kids that took that test last year. It was like, it felt like, yeah, like we saw some of the work pay off. And like Andy said, it's really a measurement of our program as a whole. How aligned are we with Common Core? Are we, and then when we see students, we look not just at whether they're proficient or not, but we look at their scaled scores to see movement from year to year. Um, and to see, you know, where, yeah, where are we needing to beef up programming for kids? Where are some gaps for us? So it's really a big picture lens that I think is uh, is useful um, because it's common for, for everybody. And some of that progression that just is also um, being used in the, other than waiting for just the one test, mm -hmm. they have interim assessments yeah. and so they have um, that a teacher can go in at any time and just say, you know what, I want to do this like quick, it's 
connected to SBAC, but it's it's an interim assessment. Just like I want to check to see like where we're at. You know, we've been working on um, uh, geometry, you know, unit for a while, and, and I want to see where our kids are at. You know, are they getting it? Are not getting it? Is there still a part that? Um, and so, you know, it's all about progression. It's all about um, teachers having an opportunity to um, assess their teaching and um, the work that they're doing with students and to see if all of what Andy was talking about um, and, and Mark, if all the work and, and change and collaboration that's happening in the school, is it, um, is it paying off or do we still you know, need to do more? So, um, yeah, we'll get to yeah. So looking then this, yeah. at so a calendar and trying to do that, the last thing that before we look at the calendar, because this is one of the pieces to fit in here, um, don't know that I didn't copy all the administrators on this one. So it was a letter, just read orally from the Brattleboro School Endowment to the Brattleboro Town School Board that says, we are writing to you as directors of the Brattleboro School Endowment, a private fund established by the community members to help support public school enrichment programs in Brattleboro. <coughs> we are a 501c3 charitable organization. Our board is compri composed of parents, business owners, educational administrators, teachers, and school board members. Our goal is to contribute to the enhancement of education in Brattleboro for many years to come through careful and conservative fund management. We have been notified of the discussion at the Brattleboro Town School Board's September 5th meeting regarding funds available in the Brattleboro Town School Board's accounts. We understand that there is also an account that the town of Brattleboro has which stipulates it must be used for the education of Brattleboro children. We would like an opportunity to talk with the school board about the Brattleboro School Endowment and our work in the Brattleboro community to see if there may be an opportunity to join funds, thereby increasing investment potential and benefit to our students. Specifically, we'd like to share information about a brief history of the fund, our board representation, our investment strategy how we've distributed some funds, the community support we've gathered, both monetarily and in-kind contributions, the support our founding members have pledged, our long-term uh, plans for the Brattleboro School Endowment. Please let us know if it would be possible to include representatives of the Brattleboro School Endowment Board in the agenda of your meeting scheduled for October 18th. So that would be a request to also look at when we're looking at times. So now coming back maybe to Kim's question of if we wanted to change the times of the meeting or the days of the meeting entirely. And when we enter into this conversation, we're missing two of the five board members. But right now we're scheduled for the 4th and the 18th. And then the November 1st meeting is also an Act 46 meeting. So what I think I've heard is people say perhaps we could make November 1st become a 5 to 6.30 meeting and ask Act 46 to start at 6.30 instead. And then on that day we were talking about doing the review of the budget from 2017 and also talking about universal meals, specifically how they're affected by a merger. and how to do it without a merger. Is that right? Yeah, I think that, well, that was what, that was what I asked about. Okay. I'm not sure that that's what Frank meant with that. There may have been something, it may have been about the, about the menus. No, I think you're probably right, I just don't remember. So I don't think anything else was asked for from November 1st that we we're talking about. So that leaves us the October meetings, which is currently October 4 and October 18. And we were just talking, we already have training scheduled on, what is it called specifically, on gender equality? Gender affirming communities. There it is. Gender affirming communities. And the diversity. For the training, and then talk more about our goal for, what was that? The goal for creating a more diverse workforce. Mm -hmm. and curriculum implicit bias, right? I think those are all, gonna, they're going to be the same thing. So that would be all on the 18th. So then the question that's left, October 4th, that's only going to be an hour and only have three board members. Do you want to meet at all? 
or switch that to potentially the 25th and do the 25th and do the SBAC and the school board or the Gratterall School Endowment question. Um, to try and be on the 25th? Yeah. If, if we can be on the 25th? Is that what? Am I hearing you all correct? So it's cancel the, 20, the 4th entirely, maybe? And move to the 25th? And, if we can. And make that the endowment request to meet. And then also the SBAC slash data presentations from administrators, and specifically a Green Street presentation. Am I summarizing correctly? So October 25th is endowment. I'm sorry, it says endowment. Endowment presentation. Data. Endowment okay. school data, and specifically Green Street. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Did I miss anything? Uh, let's see. Budget is the first. And Deb, you had mentioned earlier we need to find time in our work schedule to prepare us for the annual review. When is this annual review going to happen? We don't know. There's but supposed it's usually to give us about a month's notice. Um, so, how much time do you need to prepare us? Um, 10, 15 minutes. So, could that, could that happen on the 18th with the gender and diversity or no? Probably not a good match. Maybe we push that. We can go into November. It can go into the second meeting in November, which is November 15th. 15th. So budget sessions and EES. What do you have on there right now? Just budget sessions, curriculum overview, Eureka, ECRI, etc. Budget we asked and for in the summer. curriculum review. Yeah. So I would think that we can put in the 10, 15 yeah. minutes yeah. for Deb. What do you want me to title that? Um, Prepare for aligned monitoring system. Okay, okay. Does that feel good for you, Mark? Yes. Thank you. Jerry and Andy, do you, are you have some clarity around what we want to right? talk about? What? We're talking about the twenty fifth. Yeah. Sounds good. And you kind so of understand what we want to hear. This spoon and Robin can make it. Right, so that's the question. If Robin and Spoon can't make it, we will have to discuss something else. So I get. So can I ask you to clarify? Sorry, one more. <laughs> um, with the data meeting, just because Julianne's here and in, in, um, in Lyle, in the past the data is always in. Um, did, uh, Lyle's always invited, or Ron always invited Paul Smith to come. So. Is that something, or would you rather have? I know that Mark's going to do something, so I didn't know if it's entirely up to you. Okay, I just yeah. <laughs> so you can pass that out. I guess. Yeah. If, the, the, if you yeah, want to look at your own yeah. data, I don't know that Paul yeah, yeah, is necessary to bug to come out. Then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but that's good. Paul's happy to come. Yeah, and is prepared to do that. So yeah. we leave it between yeah. you guys and Paul to figure okay. out who would. Yeah. But yeah. in general, I think we want to look at how things are going, I mean, what, like what Mark is talking about, just look at it and do some, mm -hmm. I don't feel like we've looked back three years very much. I, I think we've kind of skipped no, it when the SBAC mm -hmm. came out. No. We kind of yeah. gave it a really precursory glance. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. really anything to look at this year. And I don't remember dwelling on it much last year. No, either, the state so. said they weren't even going to count the first year, but then when the second year came out, they said, well, actually, we'll count the first year, too. So, so I think it's a good year to, to look at yes. it and look at all three years. Just to kind of have a little impression of how it's going. Yeah, and then we can have more conversation about whether it matters. Um, the only other question I have that is... Be the the <laughs> What's that? that should not be that evening. What do you mean? The philosophical discussion. Right. Well, I don't know if you can control that. I mean, well, it's, it's, I'm asking you. Know, you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you can control yourself. I'm the least, you're, I'm the least you're probably, so. Well, <laughs> Again, I would. I got, I'm curious as to why you wouldn't want teachers here for that conversation. He didn't say he didn't want teachers oh, what, here. What did you say? He didn't want to have the philosophical discussion of why it matters. Why it matters. Well, after their presentation. Oh, I see. That would be, it, it'd basically yeah. be a kick in the butt. It would be hey, saying, great work. It doesn't matter to us anyway. That would, that would be a terrible message. Well, I think it's. 
I'm not saying it doesn't matter, and I'm not, and I'm not degrading the work that you're doing or the progress or the quality of what's happening in the schools. It's obvious. You walk in any of those buildings, it's obvious. And you talk to the kids and you talk to the parents, it's obvious. <coughs> what I'm saying is that we're, you, we're, we're putting too much emphasis on that particular score and its validity and its mean, meaning and its importance are not commensurate with the focus that we put on it, that it's a, more of a political tool than an educational tool compared to the work that goes on in those classrooms with those individual kids. It's, it's neat. well, I'm not gonna go any further, but the, um, I hope that I didn't come across that way. That wasn't my intention. I don't question that. I don't question that you're making the best of these things that you're given. There's no, obviously, that you could do a much more damage, you could do a very damage, not you, but a damaging job could be done by trying to get those scores up rather than focusing on kids learning. I don't question for a second that we're focusing on kids learning. But I also feel like the, the criticism of the SBAC are not just for me. The criticizing of, the st of standardized curriculum and standardized testing is not just for me. It's a widely, widely considered and it's widely held in this community as well. I hear it all the time from people. Partly that's because they know that that's my view, so they come and tell me that they right. share the view. I don't hear from the people that are on the other side. Because I don't I'm hear grateful that. for what you're saying. I don't hear the criticism. Yeah, you won't. I'm going to state for the record, I kind of like to see a score. I like to be able to measure something. I like to be able That's to say, yeah. this is what's happening. Yeah. And I don't feel like our teachers have been teaching to the test. I don't, I mean, I completely agree with what you're saying at the beginning. I feel like we've done a good job of balancing that. And I really don't think as a board we've been hyper focused on anything either. I, I think we've yeah. been think pretty broad. I think it's a piece of the puzzle, and it's not just a three or four piece puzzle. It's a much, much bigger puzzle, and you can't complete the puzzle without having that. And we need to see those scores, and we need to. They are they are beneficial in in their own way. And mm -hmm. as long as we understand what they're really telling us, I think that we have to agree to disagree. Some that I think well, every every person, but every person has their own apparent philosophical differences on what a score shows you. I mean. Frankly, when I see it from my own kid, I say, well, this is what she looked like today in that particular score. And then I look at it and compare with what, how did she do overall and what's her teacher saying and what do we see for growth and what is, I, I, I think that's how it's a piece, like Kim was saying. But it's a big piece because it's an actual test that somebody's designed and I'm going to have to give some credit to people that have thought, thought it through. Okay. Yeah. So I think um, this, just one more point. And, um, but I certainly, you know, I heard what you said, and I'm, you know, I'm not going to do say more about that. But um, can any of you tell me, any of the administrators tell me how the grade level number is arrived at, how they choose that spot as where a student is, is at grade 200, level? 2,435. Is that what the number is? No, I mean, there's no, weird there's numbers. a number. Like a score. And it's, yes. it's, it's, it's everywhere numbers. across the country that every nine year old. Oh gets gosh. this number, then they're at that level. How is that determined? Paul can explain this so well, the science of it. Um, because, I mean, I, I took a class with him where, like, on one day he had, had it all kind of laid out and explained. And um, so we'll it's quite complex. Ask him, ask him to explain it. Um, yeah, but he has a really good handle on okay. what went into creating the SBAC, how they identify the cut scores, um, that whole process okay. yeah well, no time yeah. A, a little yeah. bit of that. I mean the good news too is that the I mean I feel like the state now as compared to say five years ago ten years ago we are encouraged now and to have this balanced view right I mean that this whole integrated field review process is part of that that's like a qualitative look at our schools mm -hmm. actually meeting people seeing real children you know going to actually the state coming here to see this this place and there you know from the state's perspective that's as equal as this other piece the other data you know the snapshot um, so that's a that's a that's great that the kind of approach we've been taking all along anyway is now the Official. it's kind of like what's yeah. deemed best practice at this point anyway and what's encouraged and okay. and, um, and it is, part in of it seven it's, it's, was about yeah it's in a sense it's a separation yeah. between quantitative and quantitative yeah. data yeah and they are both necessary yeah and the same with our uh, student climate surveys annually yes. that we do those are taking absolutely very very seriously yeah. oh yeah 
Okay, so I think we have our agendas laid out. Okay. I don't have anything else so on the agenda. Until Andy agenda. speaks. Yes. So um, at the last meeting, we talked a little bit about the intern program yes. at the Academy School, and I know that there was probably a lack of clarity, I guess you could say, uh, regarding that. So in thinking about that and then meeting with the with Deb Cardane and the interns, that would be like nice to give us a report. To bring them here. They, they would love to come to the school board. Dave, what's about what they're doing? December 6th? December 6th. You're on the schedule. Okay, okay. Interns. The, my other, the, the only other thing about this that, that might be a loose end um, is um, I'm, not, I'm not aware of what the process is of checking with Robin and Spoon to see if they're available on the 25th. And then know. you will? Are you? Yeah, that okay. was what I thought. Great. I, I don't know what else to do. And then if they, I don't, yeah, I don't if they come back and say we can't do it, then I don't know where. Well, then we'll have to start over. Yeah. But, um, and the other thing is if we could get this new information on a new um, work plan and meeting schedule that includes the buildings where we're going to be meeting. Was I it? asked her for that and she was going to send it soon. Why do I have two? Well, it's going to be different. We just changed our work plan, so the whole thing's going to be different. So we can get a nice fresh copy and then we can oh, write all the this is Right here, this is it. Yeah. Oh, so here's a fresh copy with the location on it. So now all we have to do is change what's in it. We'll just have to change a little bit, but. Showing. Knowing where to go is good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So showing, showing October 4th at Landmark College. Oh, so that's, that's where you are. Nice. So, well, that's good. You've canceled that one now, probably. Am I? <laughs> okay. Anyone else have anything else to say? Or can I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second, Dave? Yes. All, All in favor? Aye. 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 We're done, Em. Thank you.